And now, now I'm going to have to repeat history through his eyes instead of mine, so that'll be a little harder. Uh, uh, I will say this, and we were talking up here, I'm, I'm obviously not a supporter of the president's. Um, there are a lot of things I disagree, but I do give him credit for this. He comes, what, what he does every year with the, when the governor's coming, actually Sunday night they have a really nice, you know, black tie dinner, invite all the governors and their spouses, and then Monday morning comes in and for 30 minutes talks um, with just the governors and probably two-thirds of his cabinet and senior staff in there uh, for 30 minutes. Then he has the press leave, and then for an hour and a half, he literally does question and answer and talks about anything you'd want to. And if you, you know, everything, questions right out of everything from offshore oil drill, drilling to Medicaid to Syria. Um, actually, not that much about Syria because governors are worried, worried about their own issues, but, you know, a whole scope of, uh, of issues. Most of the questions were focused on the coming, you know, sequestration and the bigger of how are we ever going to solve these financial issues. And, and it, somebody asked me, well, is it, does it get contentious? It, 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 get, it stays very respectful but pointed back and forth, um, to be honest with you. And we have, you know, we've had, we have governors and there are several who have been in Congress and been on the budget committee and that, that they, they understand the federal budget really, really well. But to his credit, he stays in there for an hour and a half and, you know, engages in a very vigorous give and take. I think his, his argument would be, um, okay, I admit, I, I, right, we have, a, we have a, a deficit issue, but we're not going to solve it uh, just by cutting expenses. Um, I wouldn't really, I mean, he, he cited Tennessee as a, a example of a state that has continued to invest in education even though we balanced our budget and wasn't sure it was an apples and apples comparison with what, he's, what he was talking about. But his point was, his point was we're not going to cut our way to, uh, to success here. Uh, the Republicans would, would answer back really quick, well, you know, right, you're saying you want a tax increase. We're saying we need spending cuts. We gave you a tax increase back in January. We need to see some real spending cuts before we go forward. Uh, and he would argue that we're, we're in the process of, of a real look at entitlement reform. I, I'll give you an idea of the interchange that happened. Like I said, and to his credit, he is very honest and direct. And somebody asked him about the ability for states to have more flexibility in Medicaid. Medicaid is, 10 care to us, is about 26, 27% of our budget. Before Governor Bredesen cut the rolls, of people, you might remember, however many years, six, seven years ago, it gotten up to be about 33% of our budget. So it's a big deal. Being governor, governor, to be honest with you, people talk about everything in the world, a lot of it's about managing Medicaid costs or TIN care. Uh, so anyway, the governors are always saying, give us more control, give us more flexibility. You can give us the same amount of money. We'll control the cost. It'll save us money. It'll save you money too long term. And he basically said, um, I'm trying to think of how he said it. said, my concern is this. My concern if we give you all that control, that powerful interests will overwhelm uh, the interests of those who are the least of these. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, uh, and so I'm, I'm not certain that you'll look after your most vulnerable citizens the way that we think you should, and since it's mostly our money, we're not willing to let go of those, of those, uh, of those strings. Uh, that, that's his summary. So I, I again, he, to his credit, he, he's great. So I said, Mr. President, you know, because he had said the same thing last year. I said, I, I know a lot of these folks. I think a lot of us ran out of a real concern for, for the least of these. We, we, they're honestly are full of men and women, both parties who, who did that. Um, but our, con our feeling is, is this, if you'll give us more control about how the law works and give us some real flexibility, then we can do that. And uh, if you will show that you're serious about changing all the, the handcuffs that are on the law, all the governors are always going to Secretary Sebelius, she's Secretary of HHS, and saying, uh, would you give us a waiver for this? Would you give us a waiver for that? At the end of the day, a lot of the things we want waivers for, she can't legally do. We want waivers for things that will incentivize healthy behaviors. It's the things, things most of you all have done in your companies. I, I, don't, I don't know everybody's business here, but I'm willing to bet most of you all who, uh, who are managing companies have put healthy behavior incentives that have driven down costs. I did that as the mayor of Knoxville for a health insurance plan. We're doing it in the state of Tennessee. We can't do that with Medicaid patients. There's just so many things that we can't do that with. And I said, if you show us real willingness to, to put that kind of, those kind of incentives in place, 
then I think you'd see Republicans being a lot more uh, willing to work with you on other things. And he basically said, I hear you, it's complicated. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm, not making, I'm not making light of his answer, I'm just saying, you know, it's a uh, change and that's a lot easier said than done. But I still think that's where we have to go. Yes, sir? Given that most of the 